Good morning, India. A very special welcome to our viewers for the very first time to our program, The Earth, Top to Bottom. We have with us today two very enig enigmatic, sorry, two very enigmatic young people um, who have undertaken very great expeditions in order to highlight environmental issues that we have today. Um, it's very rare to find people who undertake such expeditions in this world to highlight environmental issues. So we have with us today our first guest, Miss Seema Nair. Welcome to our studio, Seema. Thank you, Kevin. Um, at the onset, um, can you tell us what deep sea diving experiment that you did, expedition, sorry. What exactly is that? Uh, deep sea diving basically means uh, diving to the, the very great depths of the ocean right. and you usually do it with like a breathing apparatus right. because you are inside the ocean at maybe like 2000 feet right. and you want to stay, uh, stay there for like extended periods of time mm -hmm. maybe 2-3 hours right. yeah so you carry a breathing apparatus too right so um, what was it that you accomplished uh, with this uh, what was uh, what was the new record that you set over here um I had a uh, deep sea dive for uh, four to five hours. Right. Actually, to be exact, it's uh, four hours, uh, 55 minutes. Mm -hmm. And nobody had ever done this before. Right. And nobody. Nobody. Right. And uh, what makes this more special is that uh, I have done it for a cause. Right. I, I did it to uh, throw awareness on the, you know, the sad condition of the, uh, the lakes right. and seas mm -hmm. and water bodies mm -hmm. in general. So uh, what was the exact um, site that you uh, undertook this expedition in? Um, I actually did it from the coral reefs in Mozambique. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So can you give, uh, can you throw a little light to our audience on, for, on the um, preparation that you undertook for this expedition? See, uh, deep sea diving looks easy but it's actually pretty tough because um, you need to be very physically fit for that. Right. So I had to start my uh, training one month before. Mm -hmm. I started my uh, weights, cardio, and running and jogging to mm -hmm. just build up my stamina. Right. And I had to, you know, also do like breathing exercises because I had to increase my mm -hmm. oxygen carrying capacity. Indeed, absolutely. Because I'm going to be diving and right. um, there's going to be limited oxygen. Right. Awesome. Um, so, um, what are the um, problems that you faced as you were going down into the water? Uh, problems. Um, the thing is, uh, deep sea diving is pretty dangerous. Right. Not, not only are there like, uh, like dangerous sharks and fishes out there, like uh, you know, in the stingray. Right. It, it's just that when you um, when you dive into the sea, mm -hmm. as you go in, down, as the depth increases, mm -hmm. the pressure on the body also increases. Right. So you shouldn't come up very fast. Mm -hmm. You should like b take very like calculated steps up right. because um, it, nitrogen bubbles form in your body if yeah. you come up too fast yeah. and if they enter the bloodstream mm -hmm. it's it's very poisonous yeah. it's fatal yeah. okay so we have with us uh, a few videos that miss Seema Nair has taken from the expedition please have a look So those were the videos that Miss Seema Nair took from her expedition. Um, so what were the, um, did you encounter any sort of marine life? Yeah, there were loads of uh, marine life. As you go deeper into the ocean beds, right. I mean, to the ocean uh, um, levels and, you know, come to the ocean bed, mm -hmm. you find so many like beautiful, beautifully colored fishes in all shapes and right. sizes. And even the aquatic like vegetation is mm. very beautiful because they're colorful. Mm. Unlike you know on land, which mm. is only green, they have every color with uh, like vegetable life. Right. 
and as you were at the bottom of the ocean, yeah. what were your first thoughts? It's a very like overwhelming feeling because um, you have this feeling of being alone but not lonely. Mm -hmm. You're like in real close contact with Mother Nature because except you, there's no other human being in the vicinity. Yeah. Uh, so, as you were at the bottom, uh, did you see any uh, debris there, any shipwrecks, any Coca-Colas, what you would consider as waste or garbage? Yeah, actually there was loads of garbage. The thing is, um, on top it looks clean, but mm -hmm. as you go deeper, you realize that there's so much garbage lying around. Yeah. Uh, you know what people throw from shipwrecks, I mean from ships, and then there's also a lot of uh, shipwrecks down there. Mm -hmm. And um, now what's happening is a lot of countries, they're disposing of their garbage into the oceans and mm, seas. Right. So they travel through the rivers and flow into the oceans right. and seas. So you have seen all these things. Yeah. What would you uh, like to uh, tell the audience? What would you like to, what encouragement would you like to give the audience, our audience today? Um, see, the oceans, the seas, everything, they're all part of nature, environment, and it belongs to us. So it's our duty to protect it. We should enjoy it and also protect it. By and by protection, I mean is you conserve it. You don't throw your garbage and litter and everything into the oceans and seas. Take better steps to dispose of your garbage. Indeed, in absolutely. And um, there was Miss Simonair, who undertook the expedition into the deepest part of the ocean, the Mozambique Sea, in order to highlight environmental issues regarded with the bottom of the ocean today. We have with us uh, coming up a break and please don't go away before we um, come back to you. We'll be uh, calling our guest here, a new guest, a very enigmatic young person to our studio. Please stay tuned. Welcome back to the Earth Top to Bottom. Um, we have with us a new guest by the name of Prakash Kumar. And it's, very, it's a very real privilege for us to have with us Prakash Kumar. Prakash Kumar, welcome to our studio. Um, you undertook an expedition to the Mount Everest in order to highlight the environmental issues prevailing over there. Yes. Can you tell our audience what um, motivation what was the your inspiration uh, well basically I, I i remember some of my seniors back in uh, back in university uh, they showed me some of their videos in, uh, the whole of the himalayan right. range mm -hmm. the, those parts were littered mm -hmm. and they were severely affected by environmental right. pollution and things like that so basically that's what 
motivated me. I mean, the, the beautiful Himalayas, the beautiful Mount Everest mm -hmm. was being polluted, desecrated. Mm -hmm. so that's what. Um, so, uh, as you were preparing for this expedition, what were what um, what were the preparations basically? What sort of food? What sort of equipment did you uh, prepare for this? Well, preparations. If well, it went back almost a year. Mm -hmm. It took me a year to build up my strength, stamina, right. my diet. Starting and everything from scratch. Yeah, start from scratch. Yeah. And I mean, you don't just directly go and climb the Everest. Right. You, you, you have a six months camp mm -hmm. before climbing it. And you, you keep train, training there, yeah. getting used to the atmosphere and letting your body get used to that, uh, that the yeah, that reduced thing. oxygen. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, so, uh, what sort of equipment do you use? Well, oxygen um, tanks. Yeah, oxygen tanks, ice picks, lots of ropes, right. of course. Yeah. Uh, so, um, what sort of food did you take? Food is uh, basically uh, Yeah, that's right. A lot of canned food, chocolate bars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, basically canned food, canned meat. Right. So, uh, because of the redu reduced pressure, you have to can uh, use canned stuff, is it? Yeah, that's right. You mm -hmm. can't. You can't. We can't afford to cook food right. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you you could suddenly have a storm there, so mm -hmm. you you don't have time to light a fire and cook there. Right. Mm -hmm. um, as you were climbing, what was your approach? How did you uh, take that uh, expedition? Und undertake that expedition? Uh, well, my approach. I mean, it was Mount Everest, mm -hmm. right? So I mean, I was pretty excited. Mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, I've heard that the northwest uh, range of the Himalayas is the best approach for this. Oh yeah, expedition. that's right. We uh, we approach the Mount Everest from from Nepal. Right. Yeah, that that's from the northwestern end. Right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what yeah. is the um, at what sh at what altitude was the base camp? Uh, we set up base camp at eight, uh, eighteen thousand feet. Eighteen thousand feet. Yeah, that's pretty high. Yeah. That's very high. Um, so, as you were walking, as you were climbing up, um, what were the obstacles, physical obstacles that you encountered? Well, lots of crevices, lots of uh, lots of rocks, boulders. Mm -hmm. uh, snow can just move from under you, shift from under you. Right. So that's pretty dangerous. Right. You got to work as a team. Mm -hmm. People can just die. Mm -hmm. The entire team could get, uh, you know, just just lost. Right. Get separated. Um, yeah, and. Um, those were the problems that you faced. Yeah. Those uh, as you as you climbed up to the top of the mountain, can you describe the feeling as you crossed that last barrier? Well, it was it it was a really beautiful feeling. You mm. know? I mean, it's it's the Mount Everest after all. I mean, mm. I was on the top of the world. Indeed. Yeah. Right. So I mean, everything else was below me. Clouds. Right, the clouds. And, yeah. It was beautiful. Right. It, I mean, it can't be explained. You gotta actually experience it. Right. Uh, we have a few clips that Mr. Uh, Prakash Nair has undertaken, and we'll be seeing it shortly. So this was the mountain as it was, as you were, yeah, as you were climbing. That's, that's right. Yeah. It looks beautiful. And yeah, this was your team? Yes, that was. Right. That was my team. Uh, the backpack looks very heavy. Though. <laughs> it, it was. So that was the last crevasse that, that you had to. Yeah, that's right. And the feeling must be amazing as you yeah, crossed that. No doubt. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. And those were your teammates, is it? Yeah, that's right. That yeah. was my team. Yeah. And a lot of Sherpas along with you, I suppose. Yeah, that's right. Amazing. Yeah. Right. And um, those were the videos that Prakash and I took. And uh, as you were um, over there in the mountain, can you highlight uh, some of the um, problems that you face, environmental issues, that you, the reason that you undertook this Yeah, we, it was sad to see, I mean, there was a lot of uh, litter, mm -hmm. there was a lot of human excreta, there was a lot of uh, digital waste, right. and a lot of, lo lot of garbage, I mean, a lot of things that you would encounter in your neighborhood. Right, right. I mean, Cane it was bad. being just discarded like that. Yeah, things stuff. just being discarded. Right. 
also lots of uh, e part, some of the snow was black mm -hmm. because of a lot of the pollution around right, the world right. it settles down there. Right. Yeah. that's horrifying to yeah it is to, to hear and um, so um, what um, what programs did you undertake over there did you clean it up did you have a small drive with your teammates well uh, basically what we did we we did do a little bit of cleaning up, mm. but uh, we basically tried to study about how we can go about cleaning up in mm. the entire area. Yeah. Right, in a larger scale. Yeah, on a larger scale. Sure. Yeah, we did do a little bit, but mm. it was more on understanding how we we go about uh, cleaning up the entire right. area. Yeah. Right. And so, what? Um, uh, finally, what would you like? What advice would you like to leave our audience of you? Well. Uh, the whole, uh, I think everyone needs to be responsible when it right. comes to the environment. Right. I mean, it's going to hit you at, at some point mm -hmm. in life. I mean, nature would give it back to you. Right. So I think it, uh, we as citizens should learn to be uh, responsible and you know, take care of our environment, take care of our lives. Right. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Uh, as, a, as an ordinary citizen, what is the le least that we can do? Well, keep your surroundings clean, your neighborhoods clean. Right. Uh, that's about it. Right. I mean. Hindi. Thank you very much, Prakash Nair, for your time. Yeah. Um, and uh, that was Prakash Nair with us in our studio. And um, this is Kevin Panmai signing off from the program here, top to bottom. Please stay tuned. We have a lot of very entertaining programs coming up with us. Thank you for being with us.